This is a picture of me, the professor there, in my first year of teaching, only I think my class was a little more disorderly than this. I'll put a still picture of this at the end so you can absorb it all. Hello again, this is Mr. Pete, your interweb shop teacher, and this is tips number 860, which is part two of a two-part video entitled How to Neural. Now, in part one, and I hope you watched it, I talked all about the different kinds of neurlers, the purposes of neural, neuraling, and, and all of that. And uh, today I'm going to do the neurals, actually on aluminum and steel, with different kinds of neuraling tools here. And uh, maybe I'll start out with not using the bump type, and I've already used this and made some bad ones because that's all you get with this mainly. But I did use this, not much different than, than this. I'm going to use the clausing lathe. Now I talked in the first one again that this is my favorite. It's off of a screw machine. I have them in two different sizes. I will be using both of them and showing you how to adjust them. I talked about all kinds of other nervers, but I guess I failed to mention the scissors type. I do not have one to show you. There's quite a few videos on that, and they seem to work quite well. I just do not happen to have one. So let's make some chips. This is a good knurl on one inch aluminum. I know it's soft metal and it makes it a little bit easier, but this was done with the Brown and Sharp type screw machine knurler. And I get consistent results on that. And that's the very, uh, I think the second one that I'll show you. But these here were all done with the bump type just a few minutes ago. And the first three were done with this. And then the fourth one done with the Aloris type, which you see right here. And these were brand new rolls. But I happen to get a fairly good one here. I mean, it's not great, but it's usable. This is the type of results that I see most people on YouTube getting. And it's exactly what they look like mainly in the school shop. This one is, is kind of rough, but at least it looks like a diamond. They should look like a diamond if you're using a diamond knurler. And these, of course, do not. But the very last one here was done, again, with with this one and I had some success with that and that's the one that I'm going to use right now also on this same material with the setup that I made 15 minutes ago to make this and you know this is like a crapshoot when, when you use this you may get good ones and you may not there's just no rhyme or reason but guess and bagosh is the name of the game all right, here's the setup. Again, one inch aluminum running at about 200 RPM in back gear with a very slow feed. And I'm using this knurler. Again, they're almost brand new rolls. And you have to make sure of two things. Everything is tightened down properly and the height of the knurler is such, and I've already made that adjustment, that both rollers are touching the work at the same time. And you can do that just by sight and feel. There's no big deal on that, but it is not self-centering like that Armstrong one that I also showed you 30 seconds ago. Always put a healthy chamfer on your work, and I have set the knurler perpendicular, that is 90 degrees to the work. Some people like to put it in 2 or 3 degrees at an angle, so it, but then you don't get a sharp knurl at the end. You, can tr you need to experiment with this. Matter of fact, I'm still experimenting with it. Let's take a different view of this. And some people like to do, make it all in one pass. Some like to do it in two or three passes. Plenty of lubricant. I will be using WD-40 on aluminum because it it flushes out all of the swarf. This is the view from the back of the machine. I think it gives you a little bit better idea of what I'm doing. And I won't be able to talk during this knurling. This is a very noisy machine, especially when it's in back gears. So I'm going to make a full pass and then I will reverse the feed and come back out. And I might have to do that two or three times. Notice that the work is chucked up very short, but the work still will flex. There's that much pressure against the work, and that's one of the things I do not like about this type of knurler.
Okay, that's an absolutely horrible knurl, just as I predicted. You see, there's no diamond uh, shape there at all. Now, if I had gotten a good knurl with this bump-type knurler, you could have knocked me all over with a feather. This is what you're usually going to get. But some people do, do not recognize it as a bad knurl. As I was making this knurl, a couple things. Number one, I made three passes over it because I, it just wasn't uh, cutting. And I did power feed both ways and when you saw me stop the machine I was switching the feed on the feed change lever from forward to reverse and the feed rate was about nine thousandths. Okay, this is the knurler I'm going to use. It's the 22D brown and sharp and it's got straight rolls but they are set at 45 degrees so that will give me a diamond pattern. I've already set the for one inch diameter and I'm going to I will show you how to do that on uh, the smaller one later on but since this is already set I will be going right ahead and using it. Remember that I can only make a knurl about as long as where the eraser of the pen is but that's still at least two inches and normally you don't want one that long anyway and when I'm done with that I'm going to reset this so at zero degrees and produce a straight knurl. I'm knurling aluminum at this time. And the shank here, which is one inch, will fit right into this Aloris block and I'll hold it in the Aloris tool post and that allows me also to have power feed. So I'll do that off camera and be right back. Here's the setup. First of all, the Aloris tool block is set perfectly square with the work or perpendicular, however you want to put it. It doesn't matter how much material is sticking out now because it will not flex because the two rollers are opposite of one another. And I have this set on height, on center I should say, this way and it's on center this way and most of that was done by eyeballing it and bagasse and bagasse. There's no good way of measuring it. Now this can be turned in any direction. I think I'll tilt it a little bit like this just for the purposes of photography and then tighten down the tool block securely. And remember I'm using slow speed and power feed and lots of lubricant. All right, let's go, and I hope you can see what I'm doing because it tends to be a little dark in there. That's all the longer I'll make it and I'm going to back it out and it looks to be very good. Okay, that knurl is absolutely perfect as you can see, diamond shaped. So the setting is perfect here and the knurl is perfect. So what I'm going to do now is loosen the screws here and change the rollers to zero degrees instead of 45 degrees. Now 45 gives you a diamond shape knurl. If you set it at 30, you'll get more of a square knurl. I'm not going to do that. I want to put a straight knurl on because we often use a straight knurl and they are good looking as well. 
If you look at the knurler from this angle, you can see that this roller is set at 45 degrees as proven here by the little protractor. So I will loosen up this screw. I wish they had used a Phillips. And uh, there's a little witness mark there. I'm going to turn this until it's on zero. And you can see the position of the roller and now I will tighten that screw and lock it and then of course do the same thing here to the other side. And it's ready to go. See that the knurls are straight or at zero and everything else should stay the same as far as the pressure here of the two rollers because I haven't changed that. Again I'll set this at a little bit of an angle and tighten her down and I'm ready to knurl. However, i got to cut this off and bevel it, chamfer it, and then I'm ready to go. I probably could speed up the feed. I doubled the feed rate to about 7,000 and turned the RPM up to about 225. And this, again, is a straight neural. Let's go. And it's a beautiful straight knurl. Sometimes you get a few particles of swarf down at the bottom. Two things I want to tell you. Number one is a lot of people say that this is chipless machining because you're dis just displacing the metal and rearranging it. And you're half right. It does uh, move the metal around and raise it, but there still is swarf, as you see there. But it's almost like a powder. So in some ways we're embossing and cutting. And the other thing is I want to show you how it increases the, di the diameter. So the diameter of the aluminum is just two thousandths greater than one inch. But the diameter here is one inch and twenty-one thousandths. So it's about nineteen thousandths larger here than what it is here. And that was the purpose of me putting straight knurls on tens of thousands of stainless steel motor shafts for fishing motors 50 years ago. Alright, here's the first one that I did in aluminum. The diamond pattern. Can you see how sharply defined the diamonds are? And then here's the straight one. Turned out pretty good. Now, if you do not get a deep enough knurl, of course, you're going to have to do a trial and error with this. You, this one, these have to be set up. And usually you got to practice with, uh, because these are a production knurl, really made for thousands or, or millions of knurls. So there's a big setup time with Brown and Sharp. But anyway, this is one inch stock. And what I was going to do next was this is about seven eighths steel. I was going to do some knurls, reset this, but I decided not to because the video was already too long. But I'm going to take the other one here and it is not set correctly, although it's set at 45 degrees. And I'm going to take some, uh, where did I put it here? It's about three eighths stock. And I will have to set this off camera because, again, it's trial and error and it takes some time. Now, this is a three-quarter shaft as opposed to the one inch. So I'm going to use this tool block to hold that. 
and this is an A size, this is a B, so now I have to switch a tool, a Loris tool box post as well. So that will all be done off the of camera, including adjusting the height and the setting here, blah blah blah. There's just a lot to that, and you don't need to see it all. This material is free machining 7 16 round stock and I've already set the rollers again they're at 45 degrees and I did get what looks like a pretty good diamond knurl and this is a finer knurl than what I made on the aluminum so now I will lock this in place and by the way they used Allen screws here I like that a lot better than the slotted screws and I will cut this off and put a knurl on there that's about an inch long and I'm using uh, cutting oil this time not uh, WD-40 and you need oil constantly Very nice looking diamond knurl, good grip. Now you can make these too sharp too, you know. So it depends on what depth you want. Both of these tool holders were held in the tool post on the compound cross slide so that I had power feed. Now I had also thought about mounting this one with the three quarter shaft into this big Jacob's chuck and put it into the tail stock but I would not have power feed unless I rigged up and lashed the tail stock onto the carriage and I don't think I'm going to do that because really everything I've shown here you probably can't do in your shop unless you have some of these and eBay is probably your only source they would be terribly expensive if they still make them but maybe only 50 bucks but again here with the larger one one inch aluminum, a good diamond and a good straight knurl and here with the 7 16 steel and by the way try to use softer steels you might have trouble with uh, tool steel you will probably have trouble with hot roll steel and do not use the steel that you get at the box stores this is screw machine stock and I bought it from the same men up in Leland where I bought the two knurlers did any of this make sense and will any of it help you leave a comment and make sure you have watched part one and you too will be able to make nice knurls every time and you will not have to pray as much as you make your knurls. This is Mr. Pete saying so long for now. I hope you enjoyed it. Give me a thumbs up please. And here I am in my second year of teaching where I've had a little more experience. Not quite as much mayhem.